Hello again, John Baker here from RotacRepair.ca. I've got an engine in for inspection. Uh, it's from a Challenger. This is the drive from it. Uh, you'll recognize that. Um, take the belt off and set it aside. And it's dirty. I want to clean it. And how are the bearings in it? Not very good. Must be uh, losing a lot of horsepower trying to drive some bearings like that. This should be that these um, six bolts are put in with Loctite on them. So I want to make it easier to get it out. I'm going to heat it up and uh, try and soften the Loctite because that's how we do it. Um, I use a torch. Uh, a heat gun might be more appropriate for some people. Yep, red Loctite. Okay, so they weren't going to come out without the application of a little bit of heat on there. That's a little bit heavy. Oh yes, you can see all of the uh, the rust and the goo around in here. So yeah, not like we didn't know they were no good already. Uh, now what I do see is, I wipe this off. Check it out. Those are the uh, marks from the uh, the bolts that hold the propeller on. So the uh, we'll need to check that when we put it back together to make sure the bolts aren't too long, or maybe they're missing washers. Maybe the prop wasn't even really tight because the bolts definitely bottomed out, and that uh, that shouldn't be like that. Made these tools makes it much much easier. Uh, but when it's off the airplane, so it's on a piece of wood, so that I'm not going to damage the uh, the teeth. I just put that underneath it to kind of hold it up and hold it up a little bit and this one here is holding the centerpiece and I'm gonna there we go turn on that I'm gonna reposition the wrench right, so now I can undo the big nut threads nice not damaged that off now on these there's a bulletin years and years ago and oh look at that this is one of them let me get my pointer and I'll show you what I mean there was some of these I guess the way they were machined that when they machined this um, surface in here for this piece to slide into it was a little bit too deep so the surface here and on there should be exactly the same so it's straight all the way across what had happened was that this was lower than the surface and there was a shim that was to be added and it's right there. So there is there is the repair shim. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how thick it is. I should, could measure it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, now what happens here is that it's easier if I can wipe this off a little bit quickly here. It gets it's so dirty. So you can see now what the problem is is when I run any straight edge across here it bumps into there and it doesn't want to go past and you can see where it originally was put together that way because right in here and there is where this has actually wore its way in there a long time ago before they realized that there was something wrong. So somebody looked at this one and then they added the uh, added the shim to it um, so that now what it does is it brings this surface on here and here the same so that you can go right across. So uh, this was a real good example, uh, one to take apart because I don't remember actually seeing one like this before. So as you can see, um, there's the witness mark right there where this originally was in there and it was wiggling around. And uh, maybe they read the bulletin and then they got the little shim. And as I said, it brings it up enough that this height of this surface and the height of that surface is exactly the same. 
Okay, so let's see what we have here. So, there's what we see right there. I see that I would imagine it was from originally when it was moving around, but there is actually a groove war in the shaft here, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it shows reasonably well on there. See that groove in the shaft right there. Uh, likely from uh, when it originally was moving around a bit. So it must have ran like that for a little while before they discovered and put the shim in it. So yeah, so you can just hear how crunchy the bearings are in there. So uh, next thing you have to do is get the shaft out. That may be a, a test because I expect that there's some rust in there. We'll see. Okay, got my trusty dead blow hammer here. The reason I'm using a dead blow hammer instead of an ordinary hammer is if we were going to use this shaft again, we don't want to smash the end of it and peen it all over. So a dead blow hammer, you can hit something and not mark it. So this is why we use a dead blow hammer. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's uh, much better than I thought. Oh, can't really get it on the camera there, but there we go. Use the little punch to get it the rest of the way out. And there we go, shaft out. That I thought was going to be a big project to get that out. I've had them in there, rusted in there before, so that was quite nice. So I'm gonna take the uh, snap ring out and then I'll get ready to get the bearing out. All gloved up for this one. So again, I'm using a propane torch. For some people, it might be better to use a heat gun, but I've done this a lot of times. So what am I doing now? Well, I'm sitting on a couple of uh, metal pieces uh, from my press, and I'm heating this up, and the idea is to get this to expand out and make the hole bigger, and then the bearings pretty much just drop out. Now, could I put this in the press and do it? I could, however, there seems to be enough of these around where the bearings get loose inside. There's no way I want to risk damaging that, the inside uh, diameter uh, where the bearings fit in. So uh, some thermal expansion is definitely the way to go. So I'll uh, continue and heat this up for a little while. Generally, uh, I just use a, a random old socket that fits in there. And uh, usually I can just push them or they just fall out. Um, if I have to tap them a bit, then that's okay too. Not yet. It's getting pretty warm. So this is big. The, uh, it, it's uh, aluminum. It absorbs a lot of heat. The whole thing swells up. Just like the uh, on the belt adjustment, if your uh, belt is too tight, or verging on too tight when it's on the ground. And this is um, expanded out from uh, the heat uh, of the summer and the heat of operation. Uh, the belt's going to get an awful lot tighter. So that's why uh, just a point of interest that we need to check the belts and make sure that they're not too tight. Well, let's see if it'll move now. Yep. Yep, starting to move. So, you can see there's a little space in there, but probably doesn't show on the camera, but there is a space. Warming a little more from the bottom because, of course, heat goes up and it's thinner on the bottom. Uh, that, that part's thinner uh, uh, than this is. Well, we're getting close. I think this is a far better way of doing this than pressing it because there's one just fell out. Did you hear it hit the table? There it is. All right, need a little more heat on the top part here. So we're just doing this all expansion. No need to beat it. Uh, no need to press it and gall the inside, um, like damage the air, the surface that the outside of the bearing is going to touch on. We don't need to do that.
So the bottom part, uh, half of it, like the backside you can't see, is, is much thinner. So it's, uh, it heated up quicker, expanded faster, and this, this one's a little thicker part of it here. So Now sometimes you have to deal with a little bit of corrosion in there as well, so we'll see. Here was another one just fell out. So that's good, good sign. There's four bearings in here all together. No, well, the, the third one just fell out all by its lonesome. doesn't want to go that way so I'll take the ring out and see if I can get it out this side here we'll take the snap ring out of there and tip it over and see yeah there's some there's some brown mud in there so yeah it's almost out but not quite yet Need a little more Almost. I think there must be some corrosion behind this one. Just keep expanding this and it will come out. Wow. Whoop, there we go. Well that one was going to fight all the way, wasn't it? I thought I'd show you the tools that I used to do this. Because without these tools that I made, it's pretty tough. This is a just a flat strap. It's actually an old fan wrench that I had when I used to fix cars. It's a uh, 5 8 wrench, open end wrench. I made it into a square by welding a flat across the end so that it doesn't spread. Um, and then this is a inch and a half. Um, something else on the other end that I bought um, it's a specific trailer hitch nut wrench so I cut the other end off and I welded this old piece of tubing on here so I have a nice comfortable handle so you can use the two of them together and you've got some good leverage so that's what I use because uh, they don't make a tool for doing this the uh, procedure to reassemble this is the same as taking it apart as far as the bearings well the whole process goes uh, of course I'm not going to have to heat it up near as much as I did to get these bearings out because it's going to be all clean so once it cools back off I'll clean it and all of these uh, marks from where the bolts have bottomed out I'm going to have to make sure that that surface is it's it's all smushed up now from the bolt jamming in there I'm going to have to repair that and make sure that that's um, nice and flat. Uh, of course, it'll all be clean like everything else. Uh, and again, I'll just warm it up enough. I'll put the uh, snap ring back in uh, one end of it and um, warm it up and just drop the bearings in. Uh, maybe give them a little push, but definitely not going to hit them uh, because you don't have to. They'll just drop right in and then when, when, uh, when it cools off, it cinches it down on the bearings and holds them nice and tight and you're done now i don't see this um, super often um, but this is a real high hours challenger this is uh, probably one of the original ones um, which of course is evident by the fact that it had that spacer um, in there it had the bulletin to put the spacer in there because the surface wasn't flat as we saw before um, now bearings don't buy the seven or eight dollar bearings I mean you can if you want but it's quite a bit of work to do this spend the money put some good quality bearings in it I mean who knows how many hours that this uh, uh, propeller drive is run for and it's like they say you know if you could only talk I can just imagine all the places that this has been on the back of this Challenger thanks for watching and uh, see you again uh, hit the like button if you like and share it and subscribe and all those other things